What's up, what's up guys? I just wanna show you that the stock market is melting down as I speak. It's down 724 points. Uh, and here's the great news guys. Um, this is not a doom and gloom video. The great news is that there's gonna be a big shelf of wealth coming. Uh, and I'm very happy to anticipate and practice and actually be in the fields when this shift happens because um, me and anyone that's been following my channel knows that this um, upcoming crash is going to be a great opportunity to buy real estate at a deep discount or to get owner financing properties where you don't have to come up with the money, the seller will lend you the money. Why would sellers be motivated to sell in this upcoming crash? Because on the news, on the TV, the realtors, um, the Uber, uh, when they drop down their street, they saw, they'll see all these houses foreclosed or going for sale and the sellers are gonna panic and they're gonna willing to sell their homes at a deep discount. And it's gonna provide a great opportunity if you're a real estate investor and you know how to do short sales. Uh, what is a short sell? A short sell is whenever you go negotiate for a lower amount that's due to, to the bank. So if the seller owes, let's say 100K and you go negotiate the, to the bank and get the property at 70k or 60k or 50k depends on the situation depends on the environment what's around and and the rehab prices and the seller's uh, situation plus you're able to buy a bunch of owner financing deals like subject twos wraps uh options lease uh lent, rent to own and any, any other creative financing like master leases guys so this next crash is gonna be a great opportunity for anyone that's hungry because you can go and buy rental properties with basically no money down without getting a loan because the seller's gonna just give you their home because in their mind and in the mind of everyone that's watching the, the normal TV like Fox, CNN, they're gonna think that, hey, there's a big meltdown and they have to sell their home because they, they've taken big losses. Now, this, the real estate bubble is going to come right after the crash, or it could be step by step, or they could be together. I don't, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do know that stocks been at all time high, interest rates been all time low. The Fed just hiked it by 0.25, and you can see the side effect of the stock market or the equity market crashing because they just increased the interest rate. Uh, we got a bomb bubble. Uh, many nations like Germany, like Greece. Europe, all, all over the world are in debt. Many people are in debt in America. The, the country's in debt. And so with, with the new you know, tariff taxes and things like that, I think you know, it's gonna be a great opportunity for um, people that are hungry to go out there and buy properties um, subject to creative financing, 60 cents on a dollar through short sales because there's gonna be this panic. People have lost a lot of money to retirement and you know equities like stocks and when they drive down the street they're gonna see all these homes for sale the realtor selling them you know the house ha doesn't have value the news is telling them the house doesn't have value so they're probably gonna sell just like the last crash and this crash that I believe that's coming up is gonna be more severe than the 2000 um, dot-com bubble or the 2006 fourth quarter crash I think this is gonna be a global crash many countries around the world are using the same um, banking system called the central banking and they're using what's called fractional reserve lending and basically, basically they've indebted many nations the central banks and they've indebted many people and the banks uh, since we bailed them out you know they're too big to fail idea are risking our savings into risky assets like you know derivatives and uh, mortgage back uh, securities just like you know last time and so on if you look around right now and I've done many videos um, warning you guys for, for almost a long time that how they're changing uh, rules and regulation like for example I did a video about six six months ago talking about how Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are changing their death to come a uh, death to income ratio uh, lending formula so since so many people have so much debt um, they change it so you could borrow or, or get a mortgage even with a higher debt or you can borrow if you have significant student loan um, debt so uh, I've been sitting here you know 
ringing the bell, ringing the bell, guys. Uh, you can see like a year ago, I was telling you this is the worst time to get in real estate. I feel like anyone that has bought a real estate property, if it's commercial, if it's residential, or your personal home or investment, um, you're, you know, if you're gonna try to sell or you're fixing to flip it, you better do it quick because I think in the next coming weeks or months, um, you're, you're probably gonna have a meltdown. I don't have a crystal ball, but you know, the signs are everywhere. If you go to, let's say, Boulder, uh, Denver, Las Vegas, if you go to Dallas, a lot of these major um, metroplexes are constantly building. Like everywhere I go, they're building apartment complexes, they're building new homes. Uh, I mean, everywhere I go, like from Denver to Las Vegas to Dallas, is just so changing. It's all building and building and building and building, okay? And people have already so much debt. Jobs have not increased um, with with the payroll of inflation, and inflation is kicking in. So I think this next crash is going to be coming up. It's going to be significant opportunity to buy real estate, um, pennies on the dollar, or get subject to deals, owner financing deals, where you just market to motivate the sellers, they call you and you say, hey, can I just take over your payments? Or can I, you're behind three months, let me just make the three months and then take over because you lost your job because the corporation you work for just went out of business. Or because um, you put all your money into stocks and now stocks has, you know, went down and you lost 60%, 70% of your wealth, okay? So people are gonna be motivated. There's gonna be blood in the streets, okay? Just like the 2007, uh, 2006 fourth quarter crash. Uh, starting in 2006, fourth quarter, we saw the side effects in 2007, 2008, 2009. But um, it's a slow process, but it's definitely coming, guys. I I'm very excited. I'm very happy uh, for this crash. I'm very sorry for people that lost or are going to lose their life savings, you know. Um, but for me, I'm willing to run into the fire because when this crash comes, the stock market crashes, the real estate bubble is going to crash. We have all these other bubbles. When it crashes, I, I feel like it's gonna be a great opportunity if you know how to market, if you know how to negotiate, if you're willing to run into the fire and pick up some of these properties. Now, some of these properties may not have significant equity if you just take over their payments because you know the equity has crashed. But as long as cash flows positively for me, for example, if the house is worth 100 and the market has crashed and the, and the CMA or the fair market value around the area is let's say 80,000, I'm still willing to buy the seller's home by just taking over their payment because their interest rate has been so low. So they have a 30-year interest rate, maybe at 2%, 3%, something significantly low compared to the past years, like 2006. I took over people's payments in 2006 that had 9%, 10%, 11%, 7% interest rate. This time, I'm gonna take people's payments over where they're gonna have 2%, 3%, fixed mortgages. The last crash, it was so many people that had adjustable mortgages, arms. This crash, you know, uh, thanks to new regulation, um, there is no balloons, there, there, there's no, none of that stuff. Um, they're just like, usually like, majority gonna be fixed rate and low interest rate, which is gonna be a great opportunity. I could just step into their shoes, buy a property that used to be worth 100. Now, let's say the guy owes 100, but the fair market value around the area is 80. It doesn't matter because I'm a buy and hold guy and my exit strategy is gonna change. I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna rent it out. If the property rents, and, and it you know, should rent cash flow positively for multiple reasons. Number one, everyone's losing their home and they're downsizing or they're moving to rental property. So that's gonna increase the rental price. Number two, the person that I'm gonna buy their house taking over their payment or using some type of creative financing like do a master lease, whatever, they're gonna have extremely low interest rate on their existing mortgage because more than likely I'm targeting uh, what I call homesteads. You know, people that bought the property for their own personal use and they got the most lowest interest rates versus me going to a bank and getting a loan for uh, a commercial loan. So I'm gonna get the lowest interest rate because it's a residential, because the seller is living in it. Two, because at the time the seller borrowed the money, which was you know in a time when interest rates were all time low in, in the history of the world in a sense. And so when I take over their payments, it's gonna cash flow because of two reasons. People are moving, downsizing to, to get a rental property, and two, the, exist, the underlying mortgage that the seller has is gonna have automatically low interest compared to 2006, compared to the 1980s. 
and I'm gonna just cash flow instantly when I buy it. Now, I might not be able to turn it around and fix it up and sell it, but that's not my exit strategy when the crash comes because a lot of people are not gonna have equity where I could buy it and fix it up and flip it. So I'm gonna buy it just like uh, Mark said, subject to a wrap, maybe a master lease, maybe an option, uh, many different strategies. Maybe I'll do a short sell, depends on the deal. But if, for example, if the property has negative equity, let's say 10, 10%, 20%, okay? But I'm able to cash flow monthly from it, I'm willing to buy the house subject too. I don't care if it has 30% equity. If I'm able to cash flow 400, 500, 600 a month from it, because it has such a low interest rate, then I'm willing to buy that property um, subject too. Now, if I, if I meet a seller and they, they, they don't have equity in the house, like they don't, they're, they're underwater 10, 20%. However, maybe they have two, two mortgages or maybe they refinance it or, or maybe something that doesn't allow me to cash flow a month, then my, ex, my strategy is gonna be different. I'm not gonna buy it as subject to. I'm gonna do a short sell where I put a contract on the property for 50 cents, 60 cents, depends on the property, and I go negotiate with the lender and say, look, dude, I'm, I'm, this is why I'm going to give you this much. This is a cash deal. Here's, you know, you know, the house needs this prop, these, these repairs. Here's the comps, other homes going to foreclosure. And I'll ne negotiate with the bank to actually create equity when I buy it. So my strategy, I have many different tools in my toolkit. If you guys want to know what kind of tools, you know, you should use, you definitely need to get my mother course. I go into all this stuff, guys, okay? Different strategies, how to negotiate, how to generate leads, how to close it, how to get your check, okay? I highly recommend getting the book. It's very crucial because great opportunities are coming in. And if you look at right now, stocks are down 724 uh, points, guys. Um, in the past three months, all, the, all it's doing is going down and down and down, guys. And it's just down the corner when some other country like Greece or France, they go bankrupt. Or uh, I think th there's a bank, uh, Deutsche Bank, I, I forgot, it's, it's in Germany or something. Like they're on the verge of going bankruptcy. Their stock just dropped significantly. So it could be a different bank in a different country. It could be a different country that goes bankrupt. And then, and then we all want money or they owe us money or that could create a a domino effect in the world economy because everyone's using central banking system, everyone's using um, fractional re reserve lending, which means that the banks don't have any money in reserve, very, very little, and they're taking significant amount of risk because you know since 2006, 2007, we bailed them out because they're too big to fail. So they're probably thinking we could take more risk, and you know we the people are going to bail them out. You know. I, and you know how I think about bankers, guys. I, I don't like bankers. But the good news is, crash is coming. There's going to be blood in the streets, stocks, real estate, and many other parts are going to go down. And I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very happy for me because it creates an opportunity for me. It creates opportunity for any other investors out there. And I'm very sorry for anybody that's going to lose their life savings. They're going to lose their 401. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Sorry about that. I didn't cause this, okay? I'm just playing the game. And the Federal Reserve caused this, and they've been doing this since they changed our monetary system from money being backed by gold versus fiat money that anybody can print it, which in this case, the Federal Reserve is printing and enslaving us, guys. If you like these videos and you got some value out of it, click the, the like button. If you have any questions, leave a comment and please share. Hustle and bustle, don't, don't take no for answer, and be happy the crash is coming, guys. The crash is coming. See ya.